This tutorial will deal with cases, how to create them, import them, export them, and archive them. When you first open up Transcript Manager Pro, you're going to see the case selection window. This is going to list all of the cases that you're currently working on. The first step would be to create a new case. All you have to do is simply click New, and then enter in the case name. Now, you'll notice that I cannot actually adjust the file name. This is because we wanted to make it easier on users who would accidentally put in invalid characters that may not create a correct file name. It will automatically pull the name from the case name that you put in. You can also put in an optional description. Once you're satisfied, you go ahead and click OK, and it will open up your case. Now we have a brand new case. That of course, there are no transcripts, reports, searches, or key case issues, all of which we'll cover in a further tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Close Case, to actually close this case so we can get back to the case selection window. And now you can see that Jones versus Jones has been added to my case list. To access that case at any time, I can double click on it or select it and click Open. And I'll go right back into the case. Other things you can do from this window is you can import a case. This is great if you're working with somebody and they've created a case for you. To import a case, all you have to do is click Import and then locate that case on your hard drive. We're going to export one first and then re-import it. So let's go ahead and look at Jones versus Smith here. I want to export this and share it with a co-counsel. So I click Export and then want to put it on my desktop. So I'm just going to leave it Jones v. Jones, Jones versus Smith, I apologize, and go ahead and click Export. You'll notice it saves it as a .tmc or Transcript Manager case in whatever location I desire. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Export. And that case has now been exported. Now, let's go ahead and import that case, assuming we're on the other side. I go ahead and click Import, locate where that case file has been saved, select it, and click Import. Now, you'll notice because I already have that case in my list, it's going to change the name so I don't get the files confused. However, it will keep the same name in the case selection window. If I go ahead and open the one I just imported, you'll see here some various searches, reports, transcripts. It's an entire case. I can go in to the case and right click on the case name up here and say properties. Now this will allow me to change the name. So because I have one that's already called Jones versus Smith, I'll call this Jones versus Smith 2. Or I could completely change the name depending on my preferences. I'll now hit save. You can see it changes it up there. I'm going to close the case and it also changes it in my case selection window. Now, another feature is the archive button. Because we assume that you may not want to delete a case, for instance, you may want to visit it at a later time, uh, all of the work, you may want to reference back the case, we utilize an archive feature. So let's go ahead and archive what we just imported. I select that case and I click archive. It asked me if I want to archive the case just to confirm. Now I click yes. Now what happened to that case file? I'll show you. What you're going to want to do is locate where you installed Transcript Manager Pro. For instance, I installed Transcript Manager Pro on my hard drive, C, Program Files, Transcript Manager Pro. This is the default location where the software is installed. Once I'm at that folder, I simply open up my case data folder. There's all of my cases that I have on my list. You can see also I have an archive folder here. If I open up that archive folder, here are all the cases that I've archived. And there is that Jones versus Smith when I clicked archive. If you are done with it, you'd like to delete it from your computer, you can see a case does not take up a lot of space. All you have to do is delete it from the Windows Explorer. Click delete and then say yes to confirm. And now that case will be completely removed from your computer. I suggest keeping the archive cases because you never know when you'll want to go back and open that case up again. Now let's look at how to open up that case again if I have archived it. I'm going to go ahead and click import and then again I'm going to locate that default directory. So I've located the Transcript Manager Pro directory. Go ahead and look in case data and then I'm going to go ahead and look in archive and now let's open up uh, another sample case and I'll say import. It now adds it back to my case selection and I can open it up. Now this was an empty case, but assuming there was transcripts, searches, and reports, they would all be there. And that is how you unarchive or re-import 
a case that you have archived. Let's go ahead and archive that again just to clean up our list a little bit here. And that is working with cases. You can see it's a very easy interface. We try to make it so you never have to touch the files unless you specifically want to delete something.